if you're going to create a good speech, it's important to understand the four acts of your speech. And just as a play is four acts, so your speech is four acts. There's an A act, a C act, a T act, and an S act. Does that make sense? Four different acts, each act is a different letter. Okay, now I'm going to quickly take you through the first three acts, and I'm going to focus on the S act at the end. But the first act, the A act, is about attention, getting your audience's attention. And why are you asking about that? How do you get your audience's attention? And the simplest way to do it is to use the you. Use the word you in your speeches. There's nothing more powerful than the word you. You may have noticed that. If someone says to you, hey, we, you're not going to pay any attention. But have you ever noticed if you say, hey, you, everybody's head kind of turns around to see if they're talking to them? <laughs> in fact, you may have been familiar with the movie a while back, and the guy who said, you talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. You talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. It's a powerful, powerful word. Use the you to get the audience's attention. That's the A act. Then comes the C act. This is the thing that many speakers don't get. It's a reason why they can't speak. And the C act is about your content. Your content. Now, content is a challenge. What are you going to talk about? What are you going to talk about up there? That's a challenge we saw tonight. What are you going to talk about? And here's a simple thing, as Evelyn very well demonstrated. You find your passion, you find your speech. If you find out what you're passionate about, what you're excited about, you can talk on and on about it. Have you ever noticed, I don't know, have you ever gone to a bar and seen somebody's had just a few too many drinks and they start talking about what their passion is? Now, you may not share that passion, but they kind of go on and on. And, I really like the time when they were going through the, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Why he knows what I'm talking No one else knows what you're talking about. Why he knows what's going on. Find your passion, you find your speech. So if you're passionate, you keep on talking and talking. It's no problem at all. I find I'm passionate about helping people become better speakers. The thing I notice in Toastmasters all the time, people come in and say, how can I become a better speaker? And that was a challenge, which I understood that that's my passion. That's what I now talk about. Now, once you have a lot of passion, that's great. But what are you going to do with it? That brings up the T Act. The T Act is all about technique. Technique. And technique is simply the how-to. The how-to. So as long as you take all that passion, how do you do something? How do you make something happen? And that really comes down to uh, what's called a foundational phrase. And it's simply 10 words or less that stick in your audience's mind. 10 words or less that stick in your audience's mind. And if you can come up with a foundational phrase, something really powerful that tells people what to do, like, oh, use the you, for instance. Or find your passion, find your speech. It will stick in their mind. Days, months, weeks, years after your speech is done, people will remember, oh yeah, use the you. Find your passion, find your speech. It's simply a phrase that stays. A phrase that stays. And phrase that stays is actually one of those techniques that's going to stick in your mind afterwards. Which brings you to the S act. The S act. And the S act is the thing most speakers resist the most. Just don't want to do it. And you ever learn some, something from uh, somebody who helps a mentor, somebody who helps you out and learn things? I'm talking about who? Right? Okay. Again, if you don't know what mentors are, you can talk to these two people. <laughs> you have a mentor to help you out and develop. You know, I know this guy, Bob. Now, Bob's a tall guy, blonde hair, professional speaker. And I kept bumping. You ever bump into people in weird places? Just keep on, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I, I, I bumped him at Starbucks. So I kind of had this thing where I'd bump into him at Starbucks. We had this kind of impromptu learning session going on. So at Starbucks one day, we were talking about the S Act. He was explaining to me how this worked. He said, Tim, you know, it's very important to understand the S Act and how it works. The S Act is all about selling. Selling. The S Act is all about selling. I said, I don't want to sell. I'm really one of those salesman guys, one of those guys who goes out there like the used car salesman. I don't want to do that. Well, Tim, do you care that people actually do what you're talking about? Well, yeah, Bob, of course. Well, Tim, is it a good idea to sell them on the idea? Okay, Bob, and how do you sell people on, the, on your idea? Tim, there's something, something simple you can do. All you have to do is remember last thing is last. The last thing you say will last in the audience's mind. Just think about that. Last things last. You ever heard a speech where at the end the speakers are something like, ah, that's about it for me. It wraps up all my time. Thank you very much. You had a wonderful audience. It's been great here. Nice weather we're having. I'll be back soon. And the, you know, you figure wrap up things like that. Have you heard that? I'm talking about 
Yeah, people wrap up with, when you try to wrap up the speech, like, well, they were very glad I was there and had nice weather and um, can't really remember much else of it. Because that last thing stuck in your mind and you can't get it out. But if you have a speaker that understands last things last, and it's really powerful, that will transform your speaking right there. Last things last. And the best thing to do at the very end is have it be simple. You ever heard a speaker that's like, well, the thing you do on the 37 steps to happiness, you're like, 37 steps, I'm not going to go through that. I'll stay unhappy rather than go through 30 <laughs> steps to be happy. Come find you, you're being sad. So, but if you had something simple, it's like, it's simple. Yeah, it's simple, I understand. So it has to be simple. Your last thing is simple. And also has to be a next step. The mistake many speakers make is they don't talk about what's the next step. They're so in love with their 37 steps or their 52 steps or even their five steps. They don't say, what is the next thing you have to do? That's the most important thing your audience needs to know. What's the next thing your audience has to do? So you make it simple and a next step. And you probably do it. Always think about it. Because presumably if you come to a speech voluntarily, not a business speech, but if you come to a speech voluntarily, it's because you want to learn something, you want to get something, you want to get something out of the speaker, out of the experience. So we said, here's the simple thing you can do. Try this out. Here's the next step. If it doesn't work, forget it. Ignore it. If it works, you're better off. You're better off. You learn some of that speaker you're talking about. When you've got something out of that situation. So the TIA technique. It's all about last things last. Remember, when I have a good technique, excuse me, when I have a good, the S act about selling, excuse me, selling is about last things last. You want to really sell somebody. Remember, give them a simple next step to take. All right, now we only have two speeches. How many have about three or four?